Roughly seven years ago, Bentley shocked the industry when they introduced their very first ever sport utility vehicle, the Bentley Bentayga. Now at the time when this car first came out, it angered but also pleased a lot of enthusiasts because it gave Bentley an SUV in an SUV crazy market, but it also was built off of the same architecture that underpins the lowly Audi Q7, or at least lowly compared to Bentley status. Now for 2023, the company is expanding the Bentley portfolio with the introduction of this model. This is the Bentley Bentayga. Tega EWB, with the EWB standing for extended wheelbase because Bentley has essentially added seven more inches of length in the overall length and in the wheelbase. So as you can see this week, we're gonna live with this 2023 Bentega EWB Azure, and we're gonna find out has Bentley succeeded in creating the ultimate chauffeur style SUV? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the uber luxury styling of this Bentega EWB, let me go ahead and pop this very long hood and show you guys what's powering this thing. Now, on the standard Bentega, Bentley offers a choice between three different powertrains. However, on the EWB, they make it much more simple. It only comes with the company's four liter twin turbocharged V8. Now, technically, this is the base engine in the standard wheelbase Bentayga, but there's any there's nothing basic about this engine. This is shared, of course, with a lot of Audi RS products and Porsche products, and it's a four-liter twin-turbocharged direct injection V8 that makes 542 horsepower and 568 pound-feet of torque. This is, remember, a German uh, engine. This is again a German, or it's a British vehicle built with German parts because it's under the Volkswagen Audi Porsche umbrella. It, it all goes out through an eight. -speed speed ZF sourced automatic transmission. And of course, all wheel drive is going to be standard. There's no front wheel drive or rear wheel drive variant. All Bentegas are all wheel drive. Fuel economy is rated at 14 in the city and 21 on the highway. Bentley claims that this model here should do zero to 60 in around 4.5 seconds. It's about 0.1 seconds slower than the standard wheelbase model because Bentley says this model has gained about 250 pounds compared to the standard model. But at around 5,600 pounds, this is still a lightweight among these big, large Uber luxury vehicles. And the Bentega is rated to tow in Europe up to 7,600 or 7,716 pounds. However, that number has not been certified in the US. So you could theoretically tow with this vehicle, but it was never certified to tow that in the US where we have slightly different towing um, procedures here. Uh, and in terms of the um, top speed, Bentley says this will reach a top speed of around 187 miles an hour. When this car first came out in 2016, it was the fastest production SUV ever, but I think that claim, that, that, that title has been taken away, of course, by newer entries, but overall, it still has plenty of power. But let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the styling details. Now, first of all, closing the hood of this vehicle, my tester has the Mullinger uh, dual tone paint job, which this paint job is called black crystal over ice. Bentley offers like over a hundred different color options to choose from. And that's the beauty about Bentley is this is an ultra customizable SUV. But this color, if you guys like it, is $17,000 extra. So it's a lot more expensive versus going for a standard uh, one paint finish, uh, this model here is also a first edition, which is around $15,000 extra. It also has the black line specification, which is another $6,000 extra. But overall, you can see the styling has a lot of unique Bentley cues. Of course, you have the vertical slats in here with the blacked out Bentley grill. That's part of the black line specification. You have the Bentley badge here, the Flying B badge, although Bentley does not offer the Flying B hood ornament that you can get on the Flying Spur. The Spur is the only Bentley model that has that pop-up hood ornament. I really wish Bentley would expand that and offer it on other models. As you can see, this car got an extensive facelift back in 2021, where it has basically the same updated full LED crystal style headlights that you get on the Flying Spur and the Continental GT. You can see it has an LED daytime running light, LED low and high beams, LED turn signals. Down here, you can see that looks like a fog light, but that's actually the sensor for the adaptive cruise control. The black line specification blacks out all the chrome. My tester also has some additional carbon fiber there on the front splitter. You have air, active uh, air, or you have actual intake vents here to allow for cooling for that engine. But overall, you can see this vehicle is built off of the Audi Q7 plot architecture, the MLB Evo is what it's called. And you can kind of see it in the uh, proportions of this car. The front end obviously is, is Bentley, but when you look at the side profile, it kind of has the profile of every other SUV. However, this car here with a 125 inch long wheelbase and an overall length of just shy of 209 inches long, this is around 7.1 inches longer than the standard Bentayga and about 10 inches longer than an Audi Q7. You can really see the extra length in the rear doors. If you look at the rear door, it's actually longer versus the front door. And that's going to give you all that extra interior space back there, which we'll talk about 
in just a moment. Now for 2021, when they refreshed the car, they also added these uh, actual vents, but they're not functional. They look functional, but they're not. I love the two-tone color with the black crystal with the metallic fleck over this ice two-tone. It is a really beautiful specification. I think it works extremely well on this car and making it look and feel a lot more special. The wheels, these are $6,000 extra. Um, they are black finished five spoke directional wheel, uh, 22 inches in diameter. It's riding on a 285 by 40 ZR 22 inch tire. The brakes are nearly 16 inches in diameter clamped down by six piston calipers. So uh, this car also offers, I believe a carbon ceramic brake. My tester doesn't have it, which gives you the largest brakes in the uh, class at over 17 inches. You also have the 48 volt adaptive air suspension as standard along with the first ever rear wheel steering on a Bentayga. Uh, this model, the EWB, is the only Bentley Bentayga to get the rear wheel steering, which does shorten the turning radius by two feet compared to the standard model, even though this is longer. Now you can see the black line or the dual uh, tone paint job is really interesting because you can see the hood uh, is basically black over the ice. The roof is black. You have a panoramic sunroof along with these uh, low profile aerodynamic roof rails. And then moving over here to the rear, you can see it says first edition here to show everybody that you have an even more special Bentayga. And then moving back to this angle here, you can really see the length of this car. I mean, 209 inches long is actually about an inch shorter than the Rolls-Royce Cullinan, but for some reason, this car just looks really long. I actually love the styling of this vehicle. When I first saw the Bentayga when it first came out, I wasn't in crazy in love with it. When Bentley refreshed it for 2021, I didn't love it as well, but you know what? Now seeing it in person, uh, getting used to the design, you can see uh, the rear has a lot of Continental GT kind of built in. It's got those dual elliptical full LED crystal-like taillights, which uh, was a big change versus the pre-refreshed Bentayga where it looked a little bit more like a Range Rover. Uh, they also allowed, uh, added this feature here where they moved the license plate down here that allowed them to kind of spell out Bentley at the back, which I love. My tester also has this kind of styling package that includes this carbon fiber spoiler, which is a bigger spoiler. I kind of wish that they hid the rear wiper underneath here. It would have given it a cleaner look as opposed to seeing the rear wiper, wiper down there. And then looking at the rear bumper, you can see it's a much more sportier design with the diffuser. It also has quad outlet oval style exhaust tips, which kind of mimic the uh, look of the taillights. This is a four liter twin turbo V8. So let's go ahead and fire up that engine. You can hear how it sounds real quick. Despite the low rev limiter, this is a fantastic sounding engine. So Bentley uh, does, does a great job with engine sound and it just sounds a lot more interesting and sporty and youthful than some competitors. Now opening up the cargo area, it does have a power actuated lift gate with foot activation, I believe, but you can basically just push the B button here and that will uh, open up the cargo area. And what's interesting to me is even though this car is around seven inches longer than the regular Bentayga, they actually didn't add any more space in the trunk capacity. It's all in the rear seat. The trunk itself is nicely finished with this high plush or high pile carpet. It's got these actual metal kick plates here with these little tie down tracks, but you only get around 17 cubic feet of total storage space back here, which isn't a lot. Uh, and you can kind of see that, you know, if you remove this, you can kind of pile up stuff off to the roof, but it's the same cargo area as the standard Bentayga, which I think is a missed opportunity for Bentley. The standard Bentayga also offers a, a third row seat. You can't get a third row seat on the extended wheelbase. You can see underneath this floor, there is a ton of storage underneath here. You get the jack. There is no or it looks like tools, uh, but no actual jack because this car doesn't have a spare tire. Uh, you do have just a fix a flat kit air compression. You can see the uh, some of the speakers and such uh, and amplifiers for the NOM stereo system can be found underneath here. Again, really nicely finished cargo area. Bentley doesn't quote an actual amount of space when you fold down those rear seats, which by the way, they actually don't fold down. It looks like there's a pass through there for longer items. But if you're thinking this car is gonna give you more interior space or trunk space, uh, this is where Bentley again will surprise you. It's all in the rear seat area. I actually see a little bit of Audi Q7 in the design here, how the taillights are, are, are integrated into the actual tailgate. Uh, but overall, you can see the cargo area is useful, but you're gonna find more space in something like the new extended wheelbase Range Rover. So while the exterior of the Bentega EWB certainly looks very impressive, let's go ahead and hop into the inside because that's where Uber luxury customers really care the most about. However, before we get inside, let me show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the standard Bentley Bentega or the Bentley key fob that I showed you on the Continental and the Flying Spur. 
It is very different versus the keys you find on Audi and Porsche products. You can see it's a, got the Bentley logo on it. Has an all unique. It has a unique design with chrome and some piano black trim. It feels really heavy and sturdy. It has your usual buttons for lock or unlock, lock, power lift gate, panic, uh, and it's just a very nice feeling key. So I like the fact that Bentley actually gave it its own unique key fob compared to something like an Audi Q7. Now you can see the door handles are very traditional. If you touch that little portion there. It'll lock the doors. They'll also, the mirrors will also electrically fold away. You can turn that setting on and off. This vehicle doesn't, however, have an auto walk away lock or unlock feature. I'm surprised that it's locking that. If I touch the back of the door handle, that's going to unlock the door for me. Now, looking at the interior color combination, Bentley also offers a plethora of different hides to choose from for interior colors. My tester has what they're calling Beluga. That's the interior color. It, I guess it kind of is a black interior, although it's kind of a little bit of a graphite gray. It's a technically, I guess, the color of a beluga whale or something like that. You can see it's got the diamond quilting stitching. It's got the Bentley uh, embossed into the actual seat back itself, which looks nice. You have these uh, adjustable, expandable headrests, which basically feel like they turn into a pillow. This is also power adjusting where it goes up and down. The seats adjust in like 22 different ways. It's got the contrasting stitching and the diamond quilting, it's massaging, it's got heated and ventilation controls, and it also has these chrome accented controls down here where you can adjust it in multiple different ways. Your massage button is down here, which really just adds to the customization and just the special feeling that you get with Bentley. You can see the door panel also has a lot of nice materials where it has actual stitching here with the contrasting stitching, the diamond quilting, and whatnot, the chrome and metal trim. You can see my tester also has the 22, or the 20 speaker NOM stereo system. That's a $10,000 upcharge on its own, and it really gives this car, again, the high level of audio quality that you expect from a Bentley vehicle. You can see there's two person memory seats on the driver and on the passenger side. The window controls also feel pretty high quality. They just have a nice uh, feel to them. They also kind of feel a little bit like Audi controls, but again, they're accented in metal and chrome. It's just a really nice place to spend time. There's also the grand piano black interior trim pieces. That's like an extra $4,000. I would personally prefer wood, but again, it's also a nice option to go with if you guys like the kind of black with the contrasting white stitching and whatnot. Now getting inside the vehicle, this has obviously that higher SUV seating position, so it's easier to get in and out of this car. There is no automatic closing door feature, however. That's on the rear doors, which I'll show you in just a moment. So the driver has to so annoyingly come and grab the door handle here to close it. Um, but once it shuts, you can hear it has a nice solid sounding thunk. You can also just kind of click it and it'll have a soft close feature, which is what you expect in a vehicle that has a well over six figure price tag. Now the start stop button here to start the vehicle up is right down here by the shifter. Put your foot on the brake, push that. And you can hear it has a traditional V8 starter noise. This vehicle does not have a mild hybrid system or any kind of electrical assist in the engine. So it has a traditional starter noise. The engine itself has that typical smooth sound, but I have put it into sport mode here. The exhaust baffles instantly open and they just give you a little bit of a meaner sound to it, which I really love. Now looking at the rest of this interior, when Bentley refreshed this car in 2021, they also gave it an updated interior as well, which, me which meant you, get thing you got things like an updated dash design and you have a new 10.9 inch infotainment system with their latest software. As you can see, this is the only Bentley model that has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The Flying Spur and the Continental that I tested earlier this year did not have wireless functionality. So I like the fact that it's wireless. I will say the screen is looking a little bit it's small by modern standards. It's again, it's 10.9 inches, but again, in a world where we see up to a 17 inch tablet or even like a big 56 inch screen across the dash, this is definitely a little bit small, but for those of you who prefer more traditional look, you're gonna prefer this because it's not so overwhelming. And you also have a 12.3 inch fully digital display here, which kind of reminds you again of Audi's virtual cockpit where you can put the GPS there. You can also expand it to take up the full screen. It has its own Bentley fonts and graphics and software. But I love the fact that, you know, you have just, you know, it's not super intense here with all the screens. You do have a head up display over here. You have wonderful materials where you have real leather stitching across the dash with the contrasting stitching. You have these very high quality feeling pull vents to open and close the vents. The vents themselves, sadly, are plastic. Even this one is plastic, although I think it's metal coated, but it's not like the satisfying metal clunk that you get with Rolls Royce. Again, there's a reason why the Rolls is an extra hundred, two hundred thousand dollars more expensive. The grand piano black trim here continues on with the first edition badge there. Uh, and then there's also uh, some LED ambient lighting in here where there's actually like a diamond pattern here in the door panels, in front and rear door panels at night. There's LEDs, soft LEDs behind there that glow and actually give this interior a really beautiful feel at night. You can change the color, of course, to multiple colors 
colors. And it's a subtle but not overwhelming light that you find in some Mercedes products. So I applaud Bentley for going more with a subtle look. Now the steering wheel, you can see this is an Audi RS specific steering wheel, actually. I love the way it looks. It has some unique leather, some contrasting stitching, the same kind of buttons and switch gear from other Audi products. The Bentley logo here looks at home on this Audi steering wheel with the chrome accents on it. It's got paddles on the wheel. It's got a power tilt and telescoping wheel. It's got your adaptive cruise control buttons over here. You can also turn on the heated steering wheel over here. You can adjust this little screen over here by using these buttons. Again, the same satisfying click feel that you get from Audis. The horn, it sounds good. It doesn't sound really you know, unique, but it also is appropriately sounding for the size of this vehicle. You can see more leather stitching over here. You have a wireless phone charging pad here. You have quad zone automatic climate control. And then going to the Bentley display here, you can see it's essentially similar to what you find in some Audi products, but the software has been changed slightly and you also have a different look, uh, which again, corresponds with what Bentley is going to give you. You can see the GPS map there. It looks pretty much like Audi. You have your usual buttons over here for the wireless CarPlay. You can go to your radio sources, the home screen over here, and you can also put your GPS in the actual uh, display here, or you can put it over there. So two different styles of GPS, and it's just really quick and snappy. So I like the software behind it. I just wish the screen was just a little bit larger, maybe two to three inches larger would be nicer. It just looks small in this expansive dash. Now over here, you can see this controls the eight speed automatic transmission. If I put the vehicle in reverse by pushing the B and clicking forward, you can see it has a full 360 camera with trajectory, top down views, parking sensors and whatnot. You can also do a curb view if you guys wanna keep yourselves from curbing those big 22 inch wheels. The graphics are also fine. It's nothing super special like what I see in some Maybach Mercedes products, but uh, you can see it's definitely you know, what you expect in a vehicle with this kind of price tag. You can see more of that piano black trim here, which I would not prefer this. I'd prefer wood. This shows fingerprints and scratches pretty easily. Your drive mode selector is here. There's four, sport, Bentley mode, comfort, and custom. If you have uh, an off-road package, it'll add like another four more drive modes for terrain management and whatnot. You have downhill assist control, your stability control off, your start, stop, defeat button. You have cup holders and a little bit of storage here. You can see this right here uh, has adjustable arm restraints or armrests here, which you open this up, it's actually a single lid. It's a little bit shallow. You have two more USB-C charging ports uh, in there in addition to more USBs in the rear. The seats are very comfortable and supportive. They're basically covered in really soft and supple leather. The heat and ventilation uh, works well. The massage function works well, which by the way, if you go to the massage function by just pushing this button here on the seat, you can see there's like, looks like one, two, three, five different styles, wave, pulse, stretch, lumbar, and shoulder. My favorite is pulse. You can also increase the intensity and whatnot. You can also go into the car icon here and you can adjust certain settings for the seat where you can uh, uh, adjust um, all the, your different usual settings and whatnot. So this is relatively easy to use. It's not overwhelming. And I also like uh, just the traditional sense of luxury that you get in this vehicle. Open up the glove compartment here. You can see it's actually a pretty big glove compartment. It's damped, it's lined with felt. Uh, the speaker covers are metal are metal accented. Again, there's 20 speakers in this NOM stereo, which I think is worth every penny if you guys are an audiophile. Above me here, you can see the headliner is covered in beautiful leather. The uh, actual sun visor is also covered in leather. You can see there's a big panoramic glass roof, which actually Bentley moved the sunroof back a little bit on the EWB to give rear seat passengers more of that you know glass area to give you that open and airy feel within the cabin. The grab handles here are also even covered in leather. So there's just an attention to detail that you expect from Bentley in this cabin. And I really think that this is uh, much nicer, obviously, than what you're going to find from Porsche, from Audi, obviously. But while there is Audi switch gear in here, I think it's still a tasteful amount. And Bentley has done a really good job in making this car feel and smell uh, like you'd expect a vehicle to smell when you are driving something with the Bentley badge. Now, the whole point about the EWB is going to be in the back seat. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer clip. I also moved over to the passenger side because this is where you're going to find all of the features that you expect from a Bentley when you buy essentially a model that has the airline specification. Now you can see because of that seven inch stretch, you have an additional seven inches of legroom back here for a total of nearly 48 inches of legroom. 48 inches, again, an insane amount. You can see my tester has the seating configuration, which is the four plus one. So there's technically a middle seat here. However, you can delete that middle seat and just get a center console. I probably would do that myself, although it does give the option of seating a third passenger here in a pinch. You can see this folds down to reveal basically a center console uh, to give you that, that captain uh, captain's chair style seat. I'm sorry, I can't speak today, that you kind of expect. The other thing this car also has is power uh, opening and closing doors. Now, first of all, when you, when you open the door, you just kind of have to like 
pull it slightly, it feels motorized. And then when you want to close it, you just kind of have to push it a little bit and it'll close the rest of the way and it'll soft close for you. So again, that feature is what you expect from a vehicle with a Bentley badge. You can see the door panel materials, all beautiful leather stitching here with that grand piano black trim. Uh, there's also the LED lighting here on the door panels. You still have the same beautiful metal speakers. There's also a memory seat function as well. And you can also move that passenger seat forward to give you even more space. Now, once I get back here, you can see this could be a really far reach for somebody once you're back here. So to compensate, Bentley just basically gives you this little button here where you can push this button. It'll electrically close the door. You just have to keep holding it, which I kind of wish that I could just push it once and it'll close for me. But as you can see, once I'm back here, the space is just insane. There's 48 inches of legroom back here, which is just crazy. I can get back here, I can cross my legs. I can also push this seat forward if I'd like. You can see the center console area here. Open this up, there's two more USB charging ports. There's cup holders in here. There's like another area where you can put your phone. There's also a wireless phone charging pad there. And then my tester also has the uh, rear seat entertainment package. So there's basically two 10 inch monitors back here where you can basically stream your favorite, you know, streaming service back here from your smartphone. You can watch movies and whatnot. And you can see there's your window controls here. There's also the power opening and closing peasant shades, which block out people from seeing into the vehicle. Again, the tinted windows that you're seeing back here are an extra $1,300, which I think is an insult. You can see the fact that the rear sunroof was pushed back further, or the, the panoramic roof was pushed, pushed back further to give you, again, all this light. You can also close up this shade if you don't want. There's LED lighting in here. There's le uh, leather covering the grab handle here. And then if you want to adjust the seat, you can also kind of do that via the seat controls. As you can see here, there's the same kind of lovely 22-way adjustable seats that you get from the front of the vehicle carried over into the rear. Now, the other cool feature here is this little screen. This is a five inch display here that basically allows you to control everything in this vehicle, even the front stuff. So this is kind of a far annoying reach to fix that. Just push that little button over here. This little display pops out. This is a five inch display. And again, you can basically control anything that you want from back here, from closing all the blinds, the lighting, the car, the climate settings. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the airline seat function. I'm gonna push this little button here. This button here, when you push it and hold it, it's called relaxed. This essentially starts moving the front passenger seat out of the way. Again, it moves it all the way forward. Uh, it also allows this rear seat to recline up to 40 degrees. It's starting to do that. It starts to recline and it also starts to open up a footrest down there. You can see only the passenger side gives you that, which is why I'm sitting here on the passenger side, but it takes a little bit of a second. You have to kind of push and hold this button to do that. But once you sit, get back here and do that, you can see it's almost done. There we go. So once I'm back here, I can basically put my foot on that footrest here. The seats themselves, they are kind of reclined a little bit. I'm also, I can also turn on the massage function here. So let's go ahead and turn on the massage right here on this seat here. We'll go to the type. It gives you the same different kinds of massage that the front seat also gives you. It's definitely one of the better massages that I've, that I've, I've gotten a sense from. And you can see once you're sitting back here, I literally feel like I'm sitting in a first class seat. You can see there's a pillow back here for the head restraints. You can also move it. You can also move it forward and back a little bit. This leather in here, here in here feels really comfortable. Uh, I will say that I wish the the seat back reclined a little bit more. 40 degrees just for me isn't quite enough. Uh, to get super comfortable. Bentley says that they don't allow it to go further than that because they would have to design a new uh, occupant restraint system to kind of compensate for that because if it's reclined too much, the seatbelts won't be effective in protecting you in a crash. But again, um, for a car that is designed to, you know, be a car to be chauffeured around it, it has the space that you're looking for. And if you want, I'm actually going to take it out of this mode here because I want to show you guys another feature. So basically to go back to regular, just hit business here and that will start to put everything back into its normal position. You can see the front passenger seat will come back to its original position. It'll also fold away that um, ottoman, which again is really nice. It's also covered in the same plush carpet as the actual carpet itself. So I love that little attention to detail. Uh, and you can see this takes a little bit of time, but once it gets back into place, uh, it does have a really great upright seating position to kind of get comfortable as well. Uh, the other thing that the airline specification includes is this kind of fold-out table. So you can see, I love the, even like the hinges here to fold the tables. They feel really high quality. It feels really sturdy. I also love that the table is covered in leather. I will say that this is too far, honestly, to be used as like a workbench. It's also too small as well. So you probably could just 
prop up a tablet in here and just watch movies, but why would you do that when you have the screen over here? So it feels more like a useless table. The pass the driver's side also has the same thing, but again, it looks really nice. Um, there's also no like mirror, no convex mirror. Like I've seen that in some competitors. There's also no um, fold-out tables. A fold-out table here would have been much more effective. Along with a refrigerator, you can see, open this up, this is just a little pass-through to get into the trunk. Bentley, at least I couldn't see on their option spec, does not offer any kind of fold-out uh, champagne flutes or a refrigerator. That would be nice to see, especially at this price point. Uh, you can see materials back here are nice. You have rear seat air vents. You have your own climate controls, which are accessed again through here where it's four zone. You can also turn on the heated and cooled seat function. There's also a smart function in here where the vehicle actually has seat mumps. Your seatbelt actually has to be fastened to enable that. The smart function, I almost forgot to mention, when you have that turned on, uh, it basically will read your body temperature and it will basically either cool or heat the seat or increase or decrease the temperature based on your actual body temperature and if you're feeling warm, if you're feeling cold. So you can kind of adjust whether you are more of a colder person or a warmer person. That's a really cool feature. I've never seen that before ever in the industry. So it's really cool to see kind of Bentley introducing stuff that will really surprise a lot of people. Again, I love this little screen here at five inches. It feels really high quality. It feels like the kind of tablet that you'd find in a really high-end store. Again, you can just put that back. It'll It'll lock it back into place, it'll charge it. But overall, you can see the back seat is definitely the place that you wanna spend time. There's a ton of features back here, there's a ton of space, and Bentley in a pinch still offers you the option to get a middle seat here for those of you who actually need to carry five people. At times, this is definitely one of the best back seats that I've experienced in an Uber luxury SUV. So finally, here we are driving the Bentley Bentayga. It's, it's hard to believe that I actually haven't had a chance to drive one of these vehicles. And it's been on the market for six, seven years. It's been on the market since 2016. But I have to say, the Bentayga is the company's best-selling vehicle in the world. I mean, that's not surprising considering people's obsessions with SUVs. So the fact that this car, you know, is built on the MLB Evo platform, something that it shares with the Audi Q7 and the Porsche Cayenne is not a bad thing. It's a wonderful chassis to start with. Now the EWB is the more chauffeur style vehicle. So, so later on in the video, I'm actually gonna hop into the back seat and show you guys what it's like to be driven around in this thing. But Bentley, I've always touted as more of a driver's ultra luxury brand. So we're gonna start off with driving the vehicle. Now this car only comes with the four liter twin turbo V8, the base engine. Of course, this engine, you'll find it in a variety of Porsche and Audi RS products. Here it makes 542 horsepower. It lugs around an extra 250 pounds of weight, which honestly isn't that much more and you're talking around a 5,600 pound SUV, which is still lighter than something like the Rolls-Royce Cullinan, uh, this vehicle's main competitor. So let's go ahead and see what we can get zero to 60 wise. Bentley claims 4.5 seconds, only 0.1 seconds slower than the regular Bentayga. So I have it in its sport mode here. There isn't technically no launch control, but the eight speed does have a launch mode where you can brake, torque it, build the boost and then floor it. Ooh, holy crap. <laughs> it sounds good too. <laughs> okay, wow, zero to 60 in 4.04 seconds. So that's fast. And it has those nice little burbles and crackles from the exhaust when you have it in a sport mode. Uh, no surprise to me that this is about a half a second faster than Bentley's claim. The Germans have always been ultra conservative. I say that even though this is a British brand, but as you guys know, this is under the Volkswagen umbrella. So it's technically built using German parts in England. But man, this thing is fast. I mean, for a vehicle this big and this heavy, it should not move this quickly, but it does. And that's kind of the beauty about the Bentayga and other Bentley vehicles is uh, even though this isn't the quickest model you can buy, like Bentayga wise, that's reserved for the speed with the W12. This is gonna be plenty of power for most people. And I wanna try another zero to 60 run here. This time we're not gonna brake torque it. We're just gonna floor it from a stop and see what we can get here. So it's still in sport mode and we'll just floor it. <laughs> 4.45 there. So you shave about a half a second off the zero to 60 time when you brake torque it. Now I know most of you won't be brake torquing it, but um, it is nice to see that you get that improvement when you do, uh, when you do need to drag race somebody. And honestly, four and a half seconds to 60 is plenty fast. Uh, you don't really need a chauffeur style vehicle like this to be even faster than that. So Bentley made the right decision, I think, by just going with the V8. I mean, this four liter twin turbo V8 is the corporate signature Audi Porsche engine. It sounds good, it's smooth, it's refined, it's got torque everywhere, and it feels more powerful than its 542 horsepower you know, figures 
I'd expect it to feel, honestly. But driving the Bentayga around, this vehicle is around 7.1 inches longer in the wheelbase and in the overall length, but it's also the first Bentayga to come standard with rear wheel steering. It actually shortens the turning radius of this car um, to uh, 38.7 feet, which is actually two feet shorter than the standard wheelbase Integra. So it makes a big vehicle feel smaller than it actually is. And then uh, Bentleys have always been known for being a little bit sporty. I definitely feel that here. I mean, the steering in this car is quick, precise, not much in terms of feedback, but I'm shocked at how quick ratio it is for a luxury SUV like this. This car also has the 48 volt adaptive air suspension. Uh, which means it soaks up the imperfections of the roads quite nicely, even though we're on these massive 22 inch wheels, which do, I will say, transmit a little bit more um, bumps and harshness through the suspension into the cabin than I'd like. I'd probably recommend going with the smaller 21 inch wheels for those of you who want an even softer ride. You can adjust the ride quality. I'll actually switch the ride quality here or the ad adaptive suspension to Bentley mode. That's of course unique to Bentleys to where it gives you this perfect balance between sport and luxury. That's you know what you're looking for with a vehicle like this. But let's go ahead and take this right here. You can feel that rear wheel steering working. When I put my foot down, and just normal driving. The eight-speed automatic, this is the torque converter ZF eight-speed, is a wonderful partner for this powertrain. I will say, however, in comfort mode or in Bentley mode, there is slightly more hesitation off the, la off the line. It seems like Bentley has tuned in a little bit too much hesitation in the throttle tip-in. Uh, it makes it difficult for this vehicle to be smooth because I'm kind of pushing my foot down from an, an initial stop, and it's not giving me the acceleration. I push it a little bit harder, and then it takes off like crazy, uh, and that takes a little bit of getting used to you can delete that by switching it to sport mode, but then it's always kind of in its high, high strong mode here. But overall, it's still a wonderful vehicle to drive. I can see out of the Bentayga really easily in terms of the front, the side, the rear. I wish that Bentley would offer a digital camera review mirror. Uh, they don't offer that. I think that's something they should offer because the rear seat head restraints do block the view slightly, but we'll go ahead and make this turn here. You can feel that rear wheel steering working, put, put our foot down. Oh! <laughs> Again, that's in Bentley mode. It still will take off really fast once you get past that initial lag in, in the throttle tip-in. This car also has the latest driver assistance tech from Bentley, although it's not the newest stuff that you'll find in some Audi vehicles. It does have active lane keep assist, assist adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, traffic jam assistance and whatnot. And then in terms of the fuel efficiency, this car is rated at 1421 MPG. It's got like a 23 gallon gas tank almost. On a full tank, it was showing about 450 miles of range. Now, I suspect that's a little optimistic in my week's worth of testing, it was really showing closer to 400 miles of range. I averaged around 16 MPG in mixed driving, which is not bad. These engines from the Germans are always ultra efficient when you really want them to be on the highway. It did get around 23 MPG, which is really good gas mileage, which is not surprising to me. Although it's not that much better than the W12 powered speeds that I've driven in the Continental and the, the um, Flying Spur, although those are sedans. I'd have to actually get a speed Bentayga to see if the fuel economy is going to be noticeably worse in the SUV. But overall, I mean, driving this car, it doesn't feel that much bigger than a regular Bentayga because remember the Bentayga is about the same size as an Audi Q7. And this model here is around seven, eight inches longer than a Q7. So it drives smaller than it actually is. It feels sportier, yet it's also still comfortable. It's still quiet as heck. I'm sitting here getting a massage. But you know what? When you guys go for the airline specification package, uh, the back seat is really where you want to spend time. So let me go ahead and switch places here and show you guys what this vehicle is like to be chauffeured around in. Well, hello and welcome to the back seat of the 2023 Bentayga EWB. Now, I love driving this car, but Bentley wanted me to show you guys what it's like to be driven in it as well. And the first thing I'm going to do when I get back here, I don't want to have to reach over there to close the door. It's such a bother. So I just push this little button here, hold it and the door will electronically close for me. Now, sadly, I don't have or know any of any chauffeurs. YouTube just doesn't pay that much, but I did get the next best thing. My fiance, Keith, is so kind enough to drive me around. Say hello, Keith. Hi. <laughs> uh, so he actually has had the pleasure of being able to ride along in this car uh, the entire time that we've had it. And I have to say, this is also my first time actually sitting in the back seat as well because I've been basically driving it the whole time. But the first thing I wanna do is pop up my little five inch screen here and 
hit airline seat and we'll go into the relaxed mode. Now this mode here, if you guys remember, basically puts this seat at a 40 degree, uh, 40 degree recline. It pushes the front passenger seat out of the way and it also reveals a little footrest slash ottoman. And I have to say, this is luxury right here. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you expect when you're paying, you know, well over six figures uh, for a car that you're essentially being driven around in. And for somebody of my frame, five foot seven, I just have a ton of space back here uh, because again, remember this car is seven inches longer, giving you all that space in the rear seat. But Boo, let's go ahead and get going and uh, see what this thing is like to be driven around in. All right, off we go. Oh, the first thing I, I also want to do, oh, actually you're good, keep going. I forgot, I want to turn on my air conditioned seats because this car has like a smart function here where if I tap that it actually will sensors will read my body temperature and it actually already decided it's a little warm outside so it's turning on the cooled seat and then I also can turn on the massage function which it's basically the same massage that Keith has in the front seat as well uh, and I have to say this massage function is really really good now setting off uh, this car Bentley says they've kind of adjusted the suspension uh, to give you a little bit more of a softer ride. I mean, it already has air suspension and adaptive dampers. I really don't think the regular Bentayga needed a softer ride, but they certainly did that. Um, I think, Keith, do you, what drive mode do you have it in right now? Uh, it's in the Bentley. Okay, so the Bentley mode is essentially the mode where Bentley custom programs the the suspension, the steering, the engine to kind of be in comfort. But if, apparently if you punch it, it will switch over to the sport mode uh, automatically. Maybe we'll get a chance to do that later. But I have to say, this is the life back here. I mean, for those of you who are lucky enough to be part of the 1% where you have a chauffeur or a really cute fiance that can drive you around, uh, this is really where luxury is at. I mean, I'm sitting here in this wonderful interior with all this space. It smells really nice in here. And it doesn't even have like a perfume or anything uh, to like waft a scent, but just the natural leather and the materials in here just smell really nice. Uh, and Bentley also said that they kind of did something here for this model here where they quieted down the exhaust specifically for rear seat passengers. Now, I know this car makes a really nice sound from the front seat, but maybe Keith will punch it here and we can kind of see if I can hear it a little bit more. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this thing still farts from the back. <laughs> can you still hear it farting from the front over there? Yeah, it's just muffled a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny how when your car makes flatulent noises, it's kind of just comical. And even though Bentley tried to make it quieter, it's not really that much quieter. At least I'd have to drive the two cars, like the regular wheelbase and this back to back. Um, but overall, like this thing just glides down the road. I mean, we're not on the most like great road service, would you say, Boo? This road surface is a little kind of like louder. Yeah, it's a little rough. Yeah, they've been doing some road work here, um, but this car, even when, though it's on 20, 22 inch wheels, it just kind of soaks up the bumps. Um, but here we'll kind of take our usual drive route. And Keith, do you notice this car has four wheel steering? Can you feel it there when you're making that turn? Yeah, I could definitely <laughs> I could feel that too. <laughs> but uh, yes, I definitely felt that. Um, great feature to have in a tight parking lot or driveway, whatever it might be. Not that you're gonna have a tight driveway or parking no. space. You'll probably you have the biggest the house in the, in the neighborhood if you own yes. one of these. <laughs> but yes, that four wheel steering is unique to the EWB and it makes uh, this car have a shorter turning radius than the standard wheelbase model. I also noticed as we take some curves, how did it feel in the curves for you? I think it handles great from the driver's perspective mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, I mean, again, everything's kind of working in conjunction with the suspension, the four-wheel steering. Uh, it hides the, you know, fat of this car. I mean, it weighs like uh, almost 6,000 pounds. She's a big girl, but it shrinks, wouldn't you say, when it starts, when you start hustling around some corners? Yeah, it's amazing for a vehicle as big as this, um, just how well it glides around the corners. It doesn't feel heavy. Um, not sure how they did that, some kind of magic, but they did a great job. <laughs> it's that hand-built British witchcraft that they're doing to make this car feel super, super nice. But uh, I will say that if I was gonna criticize the back seat, it would be the fact that there aren't really any kind of fold out tables. I mean, Bentley gives us a table here, also on this side, but it's kind of useless to use. Um, there are also no champagne flutes, no refrigerator. I mean, that's something that you can get in the Maybach, which is like half the price of this car. And you can also get it in the Rolls Royce, which is double the price of this car. So I do think that Bentley could add those features. But other than that, I'm kind of sitting here 
in serenity and tranquility. I can also put up these little automatic peasant shades if I want to, and also close up the shade on the roof to give you a little bit more light, or you can kind of shade away the light. Uh, there is no surprisingly window, uh, automatic window shade in the back window, on the back window, although that would probably take up the view for the driver, uh, the rear view of the driver. Uh, but overall, I mean, if you guys are lucky enough to be able to afford a chauffeur and a car like this, uh, I mean, this is essentially comparable to sitting in first class in an airline, and that's precisely why Bentley calls it the airline package. And it's about $11,000. Is it worth the extra cost? What do you say, Boo? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Put me on the spot. I mean, if you have it, why not? If you have it, why not? I do, I do, I do think, again, champagne flutes and a fold-out table. I think that's really what it's missing. But other than that, this is definitely one of the nicest back seats that you can get at any price. So after spending a full week with the company's first ever SUV, it's pretty easy to see why people are so in love with the Bentayga. In fact, the company says that the Bentayga accounts for nearly 50% of total global sales of Bentley vehicles across the world, which doesn't surprise me at all because even though this car is built off of the MLB Evo architecture, something that it shares with vehicles like the Audi Q7, the Porsche Cayenne, that, this platform also underpins something like the Lamborghini Urus, which is a wonderful vehicle as well. This is a wonderful platform, and you can really see the strengths of that platform when you drive the Bentayga. It has one of the best ride qualities that you'll find in a sport utility vehicle. In this model here, it's even softer because Bentley was prioritizing ride comfort in general. In terms of the exterior style, that's always a subjective thing, but I love this kind of dual tone paint job in this Azure uh, trim, the first edition model with the black 22 inch wheels. This car just turns heads everywhere because again, even though it has the proportions of a regular SUV, when you see the front, you see the rear, you see the wheels, you see the size and the width of this car, it definitely commands respect. Does it command the same respect as something like the Rolls Royce Cullinan? Yes and no. I mean, Bentley, I like to say competes with Rolls-Royce, but Rolls-Royce is always quick to point out that they have no direct competitor. And really when you start poking around the Bentayga, you will see a little bit of Audi influence in the interior and some of the switch gear, but it still has that satisfying clicky feel. It has a really nice smell on the inside. It has impeccable build quality, which is what you expect. And the airline specification package, the rear seat upgrades that you get with that reclining rear seats, which are massaging, heated and ventilated. You have the tables back there. You have that footrest and ottoman and whatnot. You you have a ton more legroom in this vehicle. It definitely feels like a first class experience that you're going to want to be chauffeured around in. Now, obviously, there are a couple of things in here where I do believe Mercedes Maybach has one upped the Bentayga, especially when you look at the air, the trays in the vehicle where the Mercedes has that kind of airline tray that folds out that actually gives you an actual workstation. If you don't necessarily need that, or if you want the champagne flutes with a refrigerator, that's where I couldn't find the option package in the Bentayga where you could add a refrigerator to this car. Obviously there are a couple things that are missing that keep it from being the best ultra luxury Uber SUV out there. I mean, there's a reason why the Rolls Royce Cullinan is an extra hundred, two hundred thousand dollars over this vehicle. It's still a very interesting proposition and it really shows just how flexible and capable the MLB Evo architecture is to be able to go this high into the Uber luxury space. And that's gonna be reflected when you start looking about looking at the pricing of the Bentayga. Because if you guys want a regular Bentayga, they start at just under $200,000. That's technically before his destination. It's gonna be over 200 grand with destination. However, the EWB is about $30,000 more than the standard Bentayga, which is kind of a worthy upcharge considering how much bigger it is and how much more space you have in the rear seat area. That's gonna be money well spent for those of you who are rich enough to be able to afford a chauffeur to drive you around in places. Now, this Azure trim level is around $40,000 more at around $260,000. In fact, there are so many options on this car. I'm gonna have to pull out my cheat sheet here, which is the Monroney, because $263,500 is the base price. The color, like I said, is 17 grand. The first edition spec is 15 grand. The styling specification is 14 grand almost. The airline seat specification is 11 grand. That's money well spent. Again, if you guys wanna be driven around. The black line specification, 58 grand. The black wheels, 58 grand. Uh, the grand black on the inside, the trim is $3,700. The Mullinger color specification, another $2,800. The rear seat entertainment system, $2,700. The privacy glass back here, that's actually not standard. I'm surprised to see that. Most SUVs have that as standard. Bentley charges you an insulting $1,300 to tint the rear windows. I don't know why they would char charge you that. 
And then of course you have like the um, additional things for like the trim and the interior and the acoustic heated IR front screen, which I'm assuming is the windshield for an extra 500 bucks with destination at $2,700. This car comes to $344,225. So basically almost $350,000. That's a lot of money, I know. Uh, you could get something like the Mercedes Maybach GLS for around $170,000. The extended wheelbase Range Rover is also around $170,000. All in, this car is about hundred grand more expensive than the most expensive Range Rover and Mercedes Maybach. However, it is a Bentley. It offers even more customization. But if you compare it to the Rolls-Royce, this car basically ends where the Rolls-Royce starts. So the Rolls-Royce is gonna start at around 350 grand. Most are gonna be a half a million dollars or more, depending on how much options you wanna to add to this vehicle. So you could look at the Bentayga as a bargain if you are comparing it to a Rolls, but it kind of occupies this interesting middle space between a Rolls and a Maybach or a, the most expensive Range Rovers. And that's kind of where Bentley has found success because they're a lot more of a sportier and youthful brand. They're not kind of as stuffy as a Rolls Royce, but they're also not quite as um, lowly as a Mercedes Maybach, which you know shares parts, of course, with a regular Mercedes vehicle. Well, with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my very detailed overview on the Bentley Bentayga EWB. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.